Gentleman from New York is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Sauer, welcome back to the committee. It's great to see you again. You're becoming a mainstay on the committee, and, and I do hope that uh, you continue to update us on your case uh, now that it has been stayed and will not be implemented as it goes through the appeals process. Uh, I'd like to quickly play a, a short video, if we could. COVID-19 is targeted to attack uh, Caucasians and, and, uh, and uh, black people. The people who are most immune are Ashkenazi Jews and, uh, and Chinese. Mr. Kennedy, I have a simple question for you. As an early victim of COVID, I actually got it uh, March 10th, 2020. And, and my question to you is whether you think I should be worried about my genetics as an Ashkenazi Jew because I did contract COVID. No, not at all. And that statement that you saw there is a truncated version of a larger state. No, I understand. You, you issued a, a clarification. Where I was I describing, it, I, I, I was I understand. Hold on. I, I just, I had I a simple question. You're now a going study. on. I'm reclaiming my time. Because what I really want to talk about here is evidence. Evidence, evidence, evidence. Mr. Johnson was so eager to talk about what he called the hard evidence, and yet all we heard again was him repeating allegations without identifying any evidence. You can repeat all of these allegations as much as you want, but it doesn't make them true. Well, gentlemen, you, you are not witnesses. I don't have enough time, unfortunately. Yeah. You are not witnesses to any of this conduct, and just because you say it over and over, it doesn't make it so. And if we're talking about censorship here, which I believe is presumably the reason why Mr. Kennedy is here, the tweet that you've identified was never taken down. Whatever the government may have tried to do, and I don't, I don't agree that it tried to do what you said it did, it wasn't taken down. So how can the government actually censor anyone if there's enough freedom within the companies they're talking to that they reject whatever request that the government makes? I want to focus now, Ms. Morris, on the laptop. There's been a lot of talk about the laptop being real, and that is true. There was a laptop, it's a computer, keyboard, screen, it is, it is real, but you never got a laptop before you wrote that story, did you? That's correct. You got a hard drive. Hard drive. And you received that hard drive from Rudy Giuliani, right? Yep. Okay. Who had been openly associating with an agent of Russian intelligence in the months leading up to your story. You agree with that, right? Uh, I guess. Now. Did you do a forensic examination of that hard drive before you printed your story? Uh, we had tech people in the post looking at it, yes, yes. That's I, a, that's a forensic know. analysis? No, not... I, uh, I highly doubt that? the New York Post has the ability to do a forensic analysis of a, of a hard drive. Okay. Um, Ms. Morris, were you the uh, primary drafter of this article? That, yes. Bruce Golding was not the primary author? No. Drafter? No. Did he, uh, did he help with the, uh, with the article? Yes. And then isn't it true that he decided to withdraw his name from the byline because of concerns that he had? I wasn't involved with that. Well, isn't it true whether you were involved with it or not? I don't know the details. But he did withdraw his name from the byline. His name was not published. Right. Well, I'd like to introduce for the record a, an article in the New York Times uh, that uh, says the first line is New York Post front page article about Hunter Biden was written mostly by a staff reporter who refused to put his name on it, two Post employees said. Now, I, I would note um, you also said that this uh, article was determinative of the election, but there was a pause for 24 hours, and there was a tremendous controversy. And there is no doubt that this article received far more attention because of the controversy than it would if it had ever, ever been uh, published uh, without any controversy. And it is odd to hear my colleagues and Ms. Morris talk about their uh, somehow expert knowledge about whether it affected the election, because we're not hearing a lot about Jim Comey although one of my colleagues did say that he interfered in the 2016 election, and that is correct. 
He interfered on behalf of Donald Trump against Hillary Clinton by unnecessarily announcing of an investigation six days before. The, the majority would like us to believe that there's some broad government conspiracy, but in reality... ...speech, but the content of some of that speech that we are amplifying in this room. I'm appalled and, and just so troubled by colleagues that I have to work with that these are individuals who would bring a witness who's promoted a video that compared the COVID vaccine to the Tuskegee trials. The Tuskegee trials were a very difficult time in black America where individuals who were already sick with a disease were then reviewed, experimented on who already had a disease to see how far that disease went and making the comparison to manip that manipulates and preys on black people's feelings about the atrocities of the past in order to prevent them from seeking life-saving vaccines in the present. And knowing that this is dangerous, I, I cannot also be uh, unaware that this comes from an individual who by Mr. Roy's introduction is very smart and understands the implications of this. You know, Mr. Kennedy's own family dis decries his stance on vaccines and families disagree on a lot of things. Uh, I got family members that, you know, we all disagree. So that doesn't mean anything. But the fact that he uh, has famously sent a request to a party guest that they had to be vaccinated to come to his party. And I'd like to introduce into the record a letter from Louis Silkin, a law firm representing Mr. Kennedy, which states, as he has stated repeatedly, he vaccinated all his children, and I'd like that to be introduced into the record, um, but tells the black community and myself, a mother of five black children, that I should really be careful and not necessarily have the same safeguards to protect my family, my children, from a virus that has killed millions of people because I'm black. There's no secret that this is an amplification of his own platform. You know, I'm not going to talk about the money that's received from the Children's Health Defense, from his anti-vaccine organization that's responsible for a majority of the false information about their, out there about COVID, and the notoriety that's gained from it by manipulating black and other vulnerable communities to propagate these pseudosciences. Ms. Wiley, are you aware of the phrase superhuman yet subhumanization? I can't say I'm aware of the phrase, I am aware of the viewpoint. And can you share what you believe that to mean when it comes to black people? Well, sadly and unfortunately, we have a history in this country where black people were both by law and by social view viewed as inferior and subhuman, and that there were stereotypes attached to that that includes um, all kinds of myth about the ability to disregard both the health needs, health conditions, and disparities that exist for black people and in black communities to the detriment, not only of the health of people who are black, but also to public health by not taking good sound. Yes, yeah, so, you know, at, in chattel slavery, you don't have to feed them the same way because they can take it. They, they, they can handle that. They don't need as much. Or now with COVID, they've got superhuman genes that they don't need to get the same vaccines in, and they may be more susceptible if you get vaccines. Ms. Wiley, why do you think someone might choose to target the black community for false health information about vaccines? Well, I can't say that I can um, sit in a position to explain why anyone would do that. I can only say that for those who wished to prevent people from getting a vaccine, it was very clear that one of the ways in which you could convince people not to is to play on fears that have basis 
in historic experience, um, sadly, and, and frankly, um, and I can say this personally speaking from having conversations with friends, mm -hmm. with people I worked with. With family who members. Were with, who were terrified mm -hmm. of whether or not um, there might be some adverse consequences for them because of the Tuskegee experiments, explicitly referring to times in which black people had been tested on without their permission or denied access to medical intervention despite awareness that it would be detrimental to their health. That distrust has historical fact. Um, and we have come to a point where in terms of the COVID vaccine and what we were being told by scientists, including the ways in which both the CDC, the World Health Organization and others we're examining, we're actually putting out factual information, both about the degree to which testing and trials before approval had been, in, had included uh, people who are black, in. people who are Asian, and therefore had more basis Swally. in fact to be able to state scientifically. Time of the gentlelady, time of the gentlelady has expired. Gentlelady yields back. The gentleman from North Dakota is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I'd like to yield my time to Representative Massey. I thank the gentleman from North Dakota. Wow, the irony and cognitive dissonance from the other side of the aisle, it's deafening. You could cut it with a knife. They are at the same time denying that censorship is occurring, but suggesting that there's more material that needs to be censored. This is a hearing on censorship that began with an effort with a formal motion from the other side of the aisle to censor Mr. Kennedy. They do not want him to speak, yet that is the topic of this hearing. They have kept him from speaking. A collusion between the government and private organizations. Mr. Kennedy, in your opening statement, you um, introduced us to this word malinformation. Can you tell us more about this made up word, what it means, and some of the uh, things that you've tr said or tried to say that you've been censored for that's been characterized as malinformation. Yes, Congressman Assey, and if, if, it, if by your leave, I'd like to just respond very Please. briefly uh, to some of the, uh, what I would call, defamations that have been uh, just applied to me by the ranking member. Uh, I'm happy to talk to you about my opinions on these issues, what you, the, what you have stated and tried to associate me with uh, through guilt by association is simply inaccurate. Virtually everything, every statement that you just made about me is inaccurate. I have never advised black Americans not to receive vaccines. At one point you say I'm anti-vax and that's a bad thing. The other thing, the <laughs> other moment you point out that all my children are vax. I fact, I'm fully compliant with the vaccine schedule myself, except for COVID. I, I, I took flu vaccines for 20 years straight. I have never been anti-vax. I have never told any, I have never told the public avoid vaccination. The only thing I've asked for and my views are constantly misrepresented so that the truth of what I believe is not, we're not allowed to have a conversation with, about that with the American people, which I believe vaccines should be tested with the same rigor as other medicines and medications. You tried to associate me a moment ago with the replacement theory which is racist. No, I did not say the you time had belongs the replacement to the theory. Gentleman from I said my colleagues. The time here. belongs to the gentleman from I denounced that theory. It is racist, and I have never endorsed it or had any association with it. Our film on a medical... By the, the medical way, Bill apartheid? Buxton, Bill Buxton, who is the black CDC official who ultimately exposed the Tuskegee experiment, tried for years and years to appeal to, to CDC to stop it for 40 years. Finally, he got relief by walking into my uncle's office in the building next door, had he held hearings and ended the experiment. I remember that very well. And to say that, that I, I wrote a, I created a film that encourages blacks not to get adequate medical care is just 
completely abhorrent. If the, Don't if misuse the, my it's words. It's the witness's sir. time. Do not the, censor the witness. I'm not the, censoring the witness. The, yeah. I'm not the, censoring the witness. He's still talking. It is the, it's, it's my the time, and I've given to it to the witness. Do not censor him. I'm if not the, censoring him. If the views that you and others have applied to me, I've attributed to me, if they were actually true, I can see why I shouldn't be able to testify here today. Those are not true. These are defamations and mal malignancies that are used to censor me, to prevent people from listening to the actual things that I'm saying. And I think, ranking member, that we should have a real conversation rather than an exchange of ad hominem attacks. And answer very quickly to your question, the term malinformation was coined to describe information that Facebook and Twitter and the other social media sites understood was true, but that the White House and other federal agencies wanted censored anyway for political reasons because it challenged official orthodoxies. I'll give you one example. There was a, I was included in a group called the Disinformation Dozen. Mm -hmm. and and Facebook and others were asked to censor us, which they did. And by the way, my heck, Aaron post, it was taken down. My whole Instagram account with 900,000 people was taken down because of that. So they knew, Facebook knew that the disinformation doesn't claim it. And what they said was that disinformation doesn't came from this very shady group called the Center for Preventing Digital Hate in England that was, that was funded by dark money that should be looked into. They claim that 65% of the vaccine misinformation on the internet was generated by those 12 people. Facebook itself said that is impossible. That is false information. We know that not to be true. And yet, when the White House asked them to censor this disinformation doesn't, including me, they did it anyway when they knew it to be untrue. My time has expired. I yield gentleman, back. Gentleman, gentleman yields back. Mr. Chairman, I have a unanimous consent motion before we head to You votes. see from the gentleman from New York. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, page two of the transcript of Laura Demlo, where uh, specifically she says, uh, if someone, uh, she's asked, if someone were to leave here today, were to leave at this interview and were to suggest or imply or state that when you said, quote, the laptop was real, unquote, that it meant that the FBI had affirmatively determined in October 2020 that the laptop belonged to Hunter Biden, that the contents belonged to Hunter Biden, that the contents had not been manipulated in some way, they would be misrepresenting what you said, correct? Answer, they would be misrepresenting with, with, what I said because I don't have much knowledge of that. Without objection, I think that's already been introduced, but without objection, we'll do it again. We're Sorry, going to stand it's in recess. 55. We stand in recess for approximately 40, 45 minutes, and we'll be back and right back at it. Thank you all, and you can uh, head in the back room here. But these tragedies have also played rural South Texas and families all around the country. We but yet we give a platform to one of the biggest spreaders of anti-vaccine propaganda in the country. He has claimed that vaccines have caused widespread death. They have not. He has claimed that vaccines are unsafe for pregnant people. They are not. He has claimed that vaccines cause autism. They do not. He has even suggested that vaccines implant government control microchips into patients. They do not. As crazy as Mr. Kennedy's theories are, he has been able to effectively spray, spread false me medical information throughout our communities due to his prestigious family's name, his big pocket, deep pockets, and his websites that publish patently false health and medical information. By inviting him here today, extreme mega Republicans elevate a man who tells others that vaccines aren't safe but, but vaccines his own children for protection. And it was noted earlier, even asked guests to his party to be vaccinated. Three million lives were saved by the COVID-19 vaccine. And if anti-vaccine advocates like Mr. Kennedy did not continuously flood our communities with false health and medical information, more lives could have been saved. Ms. Wiley, Thank you for your opening remarks. 
because that was the reality that New York and so many communities across the country faced. We know that sensational false information Admission spreads much faster than accurate information. From your personal experience, is that true? Uh, it, it is true, and actually one of the ways that the social media companies, which are the places where the rules are determined, and I think it's important when we keep talking about censorship, that they have, a, the, they have the power and the legal right to decide what content is on their site, and we're talking about their policies here and their enforcement or failure to enforce them. We've actually raised alarm bells at the Leadership Conference for Civil and Human Rights about the fact that they have not sufficiently enforced their own policies and that this has led to harm, very dangerous harm, which we've talked about. Uh, but I just want to point this out as well. The social media companies actually use algorithms it's to elevate content that it finds draws users. And that's why there is research that shows far from suppressing right-wing and extremist speech, that actually the algorithm, uh, algorithms used by social media has elevated them has elevated them. And that's true from the New York Stern School that has a study out from 2021. That testimony, I think, has occurred in Congress. But even Twitter's own analytics shows that it has elevated conservative speech, which, by the way, that shows and that research shows that while we're sitting here talking about this as if there is somehow a targeting of viewpoint, it's actually been about targeting whether or not the content is consistent with the policies of the platforms that they themselves set. So this year, and really, it's literally putting even more lives at risk for elevating all these, what I think are crazy theories, uh, because in, as long as all these anti-vaccine theories are continue to spread, it makes people not only question uh, the vaccine, but other vaccines, wouldn't you agree? I, I would, and I also want to say it also incurs in, in, in our democracy in terms of voting, uh, mis- and disinformation about whether or not voting laws are being violated and whether individuals are violating them have left um, to death threats. That is also in violation of the social media policy. The gentlelady has expired. Well, the it, chair, it chair now recognizes the uh, gentlelady from Wyoming, Ms. Hagan, for five minutes.